Good afternoon, my re news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, Chang defends a decision to deportation caregivers despite the accusation of human rights breaches. The government has defended its decision to send home 12 of the 16 Haitians who arrived in the island as caregivers to 59 disabled orphans who were allowed to enter Jamaica in March as part of a humanitarian effort led by the international charity organization Monster the Seed Communities. The Haitians were returned at midnight on Tuesday, and the Minister of National Security, Dr. Harris Chang, on Wednesday told the news that they were sent home based on security concerns and the indications that there was no truth to the claim that they were caregivers for the orphans. According to Chang, while the government has no hesitation to allow the orphans and the 16 caregivers into the island, based on the crisis in Haiti, where gangsters have taken control of larger sections of the capital, it was quickly realized that only two were really caregivers, while the rest did not have a clue about what they were here to do. When we realized that 14 of the so-called caregivers were here staying in breach of their conditions, they were absconding, and in fact, one who seems to be a troublemaker had gotten a car from somebody and was driving around making mischief and taking the people out. He is the one believed to have taken the 14-year-old child out of Kingston Public Hospital with a friend of his. The police are looking for him, said Chang, in reference to one of the orphans, who has not been seen since he was released from the corporate-era health facility where he had been taken for treatment. The Haitian caregivers then became abusive to the people at the Jacob's Ladder, where the orphans are being housed, misbehaving, and when the police went there, they were hostile to the police. So we decided through immigration that they were in breach of their conditions, they came under false pretense, and we are going to deport them, so we deported them, explained Chang. He told the news that the troublemaker and another of the so-called caregivers have not yet been found. However, two other Haitians, who had been previously ordered deported and were in detention, were included in the group, shipped out at midnight Tuesday. The people who came here were illegal migrants in our country, and I have the law behind me to send them back where they came from, and they were all of questionable character, said Chang, as he told the news that he is considering putting a prohibition order on American Susie Grabacher, the founder of Haiti Children, who organized the mission to take the Haitian orphans to Jamaica. We have refused her landing here three times and we are considering putting a prohibition order. The entire scheme was a dishonest scheme and if it was not for the integrity, strength and the character of the mustard seed communities as a respected international Catholic charity, they would have drawn the country through the mud. The private sector and the government will help mustard seed to manage but we have sent home these people who are troublemakers, said Chang. He said the police are tracking an address in Stony Hill, St. Andrew, and a school in Otrius, St. Anne, as the search for the two missing so-called caregivers continues. The security minister's response came hours after a news source reported that the situation involving the 10 deported caregivers escalated drastically on Tuesday, as they were confined to a room all weekend into Tuesday night. According to the source, a bus drove up onto the Jacob's Ladder compound along with the police, which signaled the end of the road for the so-called caregivers. They ordered the caregivers to get on the bus to go to Portland. The lawyer called the police and they would not disclose the location to her, only that they would be brought to a facility in Portland, the source claimed. According to the source, even after submitting asylum claims on behalf of the 12 caregivers, Human rights lawyer Malin Elaine failed in a bid to prevent local authorities from sending them back to Haiti. Elaine, who is representing the group that brought the children in from Haiti, described the situation as an unprecedented scale of cruelty to humanity in Jamaica. Tuesday night was so traumatic. They, the caregivers, were giving me a play-by-play -play of them being returned to Haiti. They were saying, please help me, I am going back to a war zone. I am so afraid, Elaine said in an interview on Wednesday morning. The situation is extremely urgent and what we are facing now is a rupture in the rule of law that is extremely serious. 
Police officers went to Mustard Seed and collected the Haitian nationals who were there and transported them to an undisclosed location. When I tried to speak with the police, they refused to speak with me. When the Haitians themselves asked the officers what was happening, the officers refused to say. Those Haitians verbally requested asylum, and I also submitted a request for asylum on Tuesday, but nonetheless, they were sent back home to Haiti within moments of reaching Portland, said Aline. According to the lawyer, problems between Mustard Seed and Haiti children escalated after a senior official of Haiti children did an interview with the news expressing disappointment about how the orphans were being treated at the facility. Following those allegations, there were a series of bizarre headlines about the caregivers being missing and the reports being made to immigration officials about these Haitians being missing. In the fifth order, they were sent back, Aline lamented. I am now looking at an email correspondence from Haiti children to the Passport, Immigration and the Citizenship Agency begging them to please assist. They were given the impression that action was being taken to regularize their status and they should just wait and be patient, added Aline. Operators of Haiti children have insisted that the caregivers were given permission to leave the compound each time and were never missing. They claimed that the caregivers worked on a shift system and would seek permission each time to leave the compound and would always return. On Wednesday, Krabacho rejected the allegation that Haiti gangsters were among the caregivers who came to Jamaica. Krabacho told the news that it was the Jamaican authorities that have made them look like criminals. Most of them worked with us for more than 10 years. One of the deportees was a nurse who has worked with us for 17 years. They thought they were welcome. They were only doing their jobs, said Krabacho. Transport Minister meets with the police regarding fuel theft at the JUTC. Transport Minister Darrell Vaz on Wednesday met with members of the Police High Command to discuss the ongoing theft of diesel fuel from the Jamaica Urban Transit Company. Speaking at Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing, Mr. Vaz said the state-owned bus company continues to lose millions of dollars due to the theft of diesel fuel. He indicated that the fire at the Spanish Town Depot in St. Catherine on the weekend may have been triggered by the long-standing illegal activity. Mr. Vaz said he is awaiting a report from the police on the investigation. I'm sure that I'll get a report in due course. I don't want to preempt my own thoughts and intelligence. But bottom line is that something is not right and it needs to be dealt with. And it needs to be dealt with once and for all. And that meeting today will take me in a path in terms of what support can I get from the police and if necessary the military to really put a clamp down on what's taking place at the JUTC. Constitutional amendment was not needed to protect Llewellyn's pension rights, lawyers argue. Lawyers representing opposition politicians Philip Polwell and Peter Bunting on Wednesday argued that the controversial Constitutional Amendment Act was not needed to protect the Director of Public Prosecutions Paul Llewellyn's pension rights. Government lawyers and the lawyer representing Ms. Llewellyn has been arguing that the controversial Constitutional Amendment Act was necessary to protect Ms. Llewellyn's right to early retirement. But on Wednesday, Kevin Powell, arguing for the respondents, Philip Paulwell and Peter Bunting, disagreed. He told the court that Ms. Llewellyn was covered by the definition of an existing public officer under the Pensions Act 2017 and that, therefore, her pension rights had been protected. This, he said, meant she was not left in the cold, as her lawyer, King's Counsel Douglas Lays, had suggested. Also addressing the court, King's Counsel Michael Hilton said the major question the court has to answer is, do the principles of separation of powers and the proper purpose exist in Jamaica's constitution, and if so, did the Constitutional Amendment Act breach either or both of those principles? Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.